Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Chanel double unboxing today. Whew. All right, um, I have a story with each item or I have, you know, stuff to say with each item. Um, there was a bit of uncertainty and, and whatnot, um, but we will get into that. We, yeah, we will have a chat and we'll talk about it because this is not just going to be a fluid unboxing. Yeah, I bought this from Chanel Spring Summer and this is it. It's so cute. Thanks. Bye. It's not going to be one of those unboxings. I have stuff to say and, and yeah, but yeah, before I dive into today's video, if you are new to my channel and you love all things luxury and fashion, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button below and also the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. I upload every weekend and then I try to have a midweek upload as well. Sometimes, maybe not all the time, just sometimes it's a surprise. Uh, but yeah, all right. Ha ha ha. So this is stuff that has actually come from the current spring summer collection, uh, 22S, I think. Yeah, they're both 22S. I'm pretty sure they're 20. Yes, they are 22S. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do this one first. It is not a bag, but like I said, it is from uh, current season. Um, however, this this particular item. I'm not really sure that I made the right decision with it, but I mean, I'm kind of a little bit torn. I know I have a lot of US viewers and um, unfortunately, I, I wish that we were actually more similar to the US in terms of like our retail industry. But um, if you happen to change your mind in Australia and you make a wrong purchase, you can't return it for a refund. Uh, unless it's Louis Vuitton. Lu Louis Vuitton you can, but um, everywhere else is return for a credit note only, and I hate credit note. So this is what I picked up from this season. Put that down, two dust bags, and that is a pair of shoes. So let me get these out so you guys can have a good look at them. So these are what they kind of calling like the pillow sandal, the puffy, puffy pillow sandal. Um, and quite frankly, I picked these out because I thought that, or well, I do know that they are ridiculously comfortable. I can say that much. They are so comfortable, but I kind of didn't really know how like they were quite puffy and I'm a short person. So, um, I do really like the chunky shoe look. That's the other thing is that I really like chunky shoes, so I'm wondering like, you know, should I just give them a go? What I kind of am a little bit disappointed with this shoe is that this is quite like puffy. And I think that that really makes a fantastic vibe to the shoe. But if you're short um, and you don't have the rest of the balance in the shoe to make you taller, like it's missing the platform essentially. That's what I'm trying to say. It's missing a decent chunky platform. Um, and that would make the shoe itself more suitable for a short person like me. I'm not quite sure that it really suits me. However, if you're a tall person or an, you're an average height, I think that these sandals are freaking amazing and you definitely should go and try them and give them a go. That's the mistake I made is that I didn't try these on. I actually remote ordered these and I remote ordered the bag. And that being said is that that's the other thing is that Chanel now um, in Australia, uh, I don't know what it's like in the US, but pretty much in Australia, there is like no more remote orders. Uh, if you live in Sydney, I'm not sure about Melbourne. Um, Queensland is like bags. You're not supposed to remote order them. You're supposed to go to the store and pick them up. And then remote orders are supposed to be like minimum of $3,000 for like anything else that's like not a bag. Um, those you can get shipped out. However, if you don't live near the store, but um, the only catch is that I end up having to pick something else if I want a bag. And I wanted this bag and I needed to, like I had, I kind of, you know, I kind of was like in a way obligated to pick something else. I can see both sides of the coin. And I know that my logical point goes, that is annoying. You should be able to just buy the bag, have it sent out to you, end of story, right? However, Chanel has this problem with resale, right, with resale and resellers. Like people deliberately buying bags just to flip them and make a profit. And I'm not talking about like buying a bag and then going, crap, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And then you end up having to sell it. That's a, just a genuine buyer's remorse. Um, and if you can't return it for a refund, like what choice do you have? Especially in Australia, 
what choice do you have? I have been there before. Like I've been in that situation where I was like, well, I can't return this for a refund. I don't want to sit on a credit note of like $6,000. Who wants to do that? That's not cool. That's not cool. I like to just spend my money when I want to spend my money. I don't want to have it sitting with nothing to show. So I have been in that situation before, but Chanel has a problem with deliberate like deliberate resellers, people that are just buying it because it's coveted and sought after and they're reselling it for a profit. And I see that like their tactic to try to like minimize that is no more remote orders in most circumstances. Um, otherwise, you know, it, even that, even, even like with the no more remote orders, I have heard that in Sydney, it's the same kind of thing. You have to buy an item to, to get the bag. So it's like every reseller's receipt has another item on that receipt and they don't just have the bag like they've got to buy something else and if I was kind of you know trying to be clever about it I would have just gone for like um earrings or something like that because they're cheaper um but uh I kind of wanted these slides like I wanted them <laughs> but the peril was that I never got to try them on and then when I got home and I unboxed them I'm like oh my god they're so cool I love them and then I put them on my feet and I'm like huh I don't know like they're quite puffy, but they don't have the platform. I'll tell you more about the sandals anyway. So, like I said, really, really ridiculously comfortable like clouds. If you have problems with your feet, like, um, you know, foot issues in any way, like you get like pains in your feet just from, you know, wearing uncomfortable shoes, you, you're flat footed, I don't know. If you need some kind of support, whether you need arch support, just foot support, if you have painful bunions or whatever it may be, which I have a bunion because I broke my toe too many times and now the bone sticks out, which is annoying. But yeah, like I could really benefit from these, to be honest. And um, anyone who's in that kind of similar situation could really, really benefit from these. Like, you can feel a little bit of a weight to them, slight weight, but not the kind of weight that's like super like, like you don't notice it right at all. Like it's fairly... It's fairly proportionate in my opinion. Uh, size wise, true to size, however, I kind of feel like unless you, if you have skinny feet, you should take, um, like if you're a half size, you should probably go the one down if you have skinny feet. But if you have like average to normal feet, then it's probably probably better to just go up, like to the next size up if you're a halfie. But if you're a full size person like me, I'm a 36, so these are like a perfect fit for me. The sole is really thick as well. So if you look along there, it's quite a thick, not just this part here, but I mean like the actual sole part, it is fairly thick. And that means that it's not gonna need to, like need a resoling quite quickly. Anyways, let's unbox this beauty right here, this handbag. Now, I don't wanna be like giddy or like super excited and like, you know, cause I feel like everybody who's unboxed this bag has just been like, yeah. Look, not to take the piss on anyone because I actually don't blame them for feeling that way. And I think that that's actually a pretty realistic kind of, you know, reaction to actually getting this bag. Like, the thing is, is that I was really excited to buy this bag. But then <laughs> I started to look. Like, I bought it. I was super excited. You know, my, my sales associate came through. And um, even though I'm in a new state and I'm still building, like, a relationship with the store, I still found that they've been pretty darn, like, good with me because, yeah, I'll, I'll talk later anyway about it. But, yeah, basically, in a nutshell, I've seen someone else's Instagram post about this bag and then it made me a bit worried. And that's why my reaction to this, and I've already unboxed it and had a look at it, um, I just am not, like, Wow, oh my god! For a very good reason, which let me just show you the bag. Let me show you the bag and then I'll explain like what I mean about that other Instagram post that I seen about this bag and why it kind of kind of made me go, ooh, oh, did I make the right decision? So I got, which I think you guys know, you know, right? Only way that you don't know what this is, is if you just don't follow like luxury, like if you just don't know what's like in season and that sort of thing, which is totally fine, you know, but I think it's majority of us, like if you're watching my channel, chances are you probably know what's inside. And that's why I'm kind of thinking you might be a bit shocked that I'm not just like, oh my God. But anyways, all right. So I got the ever so elusive, ever so coveted, like crazy madness, Chanel heart bag. Oh, isn't that bright on camera? Doesn't that look super bright against my green too? It's like, wow. Like 
yeah i think that really suits though i really think that that suits actually i got hair on my face as usual oh my gosh very um anticlimactic unboxing oh no now it's in my eyelash all right my frizzy hair to the person that said that my hair looks crispy well for starters it was the blonde that wasn't helping but i already have crispy hair um so if you're watching because I didn't really, couldn't be bothered to elaborate on the comment. I'm actually part Spanish. <laughs> you may not know that. I'm Filipino and I'm Spanish and I'm Australian. So I have frizzy hair. Like, if it wasn't for the fact that I had like dyed the crap out of my hair, bleached the crap out of my hair, I probably would have a beautiful curly hair. But because I have killed it, um, I have frizzy hair now. <laughs> um, so... The heart bag this is actually the large size if you didn't know pretty much the way you can tell is like the number of quilts you can kind of just go across the top one two three four five six whereas the smaller size is over, i think it's about five five quilts but the reason why i'm not like <laughs> wow for this bag i am i really i really do i really really actually quite like it love it i'm gonna say love it because there's a lot of things about it that i really appreciate but i try not to use the word love when there is that little shred of uncertainty because I feel like it's an over exaggeration and it can be a bit of a contradiction in like when I'm about to say something that's the negative of it so I really like the bag I'm not gonna let it go however what made me worried when I did already buy it and pay for it when I seen this post from Saki, uh, which is x Saki Saki on Instagram and she does have a YouTube channel as well I seen her post revealing the heart bag and I was actually don't know why it didn't pop up in my feed earlier because it was actually days ago that she kind of like revealed it and then I seen another post where she said that she was shocked that her strap fell off her heart bag and when I seen those images I was just like oh man what have I gotten myself into I've just spent eight thousand and fifty dollars on a bag I've also bought an item to go with it which was just under fifteen hundred bucks I pretty much have spent almost 10 grand <laughs> with Chanel and you're telling me that this strap could fall off. Okay, so my first reaction was, okay, all right, I made a mistake. I'm gonna have to rehome this, you know, and I just started freaking out, okay? And that was because I hadn't watched a video yet. And then I had to go get my daughter from school, yada, yada, and then I ended up watching her video later. So after I watched her video, she kind of explained like, you know, that she couldn't get another bag she couldn't exchange it. There was nothing else in the US. It was even hard enough to get as it, like, as it is. So um, if she wanted to get it repaired, she could give it to Chanel and they will repair it and it could take months to come back. Um, because like I said, she couldn't just exchange it for another one. She could get a refund, but she really wanted to have the bag. So she said that because of the way that the strap fell, like the strap, because of the way the strap came off, which was on her first use of the bag, um, and the way that it's kind of designed is that you can actually fix it yourself and put it back together. I think the best way to really explain what I'm saying is to actually link her video down below, which I'm going to do. It is going to be a bit hard to focus. All right, it is probably going to be pretty difficult. So I think the best thing to do is probably to watch her video and you'll notice on the pictures anyway. But back here, there is actually a screw, like a flathead screw just here. You can see there's a bit of a rivet. See how there's a rivet? So this is a bag hook, like a bag, uh, a strap attachment rivet it's actually something that i have in my accessory store i actually sell like something like this uh, obviously not with the cc on it but basically all it is is a screw it's a screw flat screw head and then an actual screw set a screw thread and then the receiving point so you can actually if it does come off hmm let's just take that with a grain of salt because we already know that this is not right this is not good that any strap is falling off an eight thousand dollar hand bag uh, but if it does happen to you and you've got the heart bag you can reattach it and pretty much flathead screwdriver you're gonna have to hold this hold this side and then get your flathead screwdriver twisting it to because if you don't hold this if you don't hold this part it's going to keep spinning as well and you're never going to get it tight because you're going to get this spin. You have to actually secure this in place to tighten it up. So I've gone ahead and tried to tighten these and they are as tight as they will go. So um, hopefully my strap doesn't break and come off. However, what I can say is that this still pivots. So 
here you see how it kind of spins a bit so you see how i can kind of move it like you know to the left like looking at this like u shape here if my camera would stay in focus and now i can move it to the right so it does still pivot it still pivots around however given that i have tightened it it's not it's not actually uncom like it shouldn't in theory be coming off the screw but um, like it's more so moving around in, around in the circle because there's already a punched circle and this is where they popped this um, bag strap rivet in this rivet I'm just gonna call it a rivet because that's essentially what it is um, but the more that that wiggles it will eventually start to un come undone from the thread like they're gonna start to separate like that's really just mechanical uh, mechanical physics right that you know if you are gonna keep moving something around and spinning it around that and it's a screw thread eventually it's just going to start gradually coming off. So I think that if you own this bag, you're really going to have to make sure that you keep, I'm not going to say to keep it tightening it all the time because you also don't want to damage um, the flathead. So that, that, I mean, that kind of really explains it in a nutshell why I was kind of like going, oh gosh, I've made the wrong decision. So there was one point where I was thinking, you know what, if I use this bag and the and the bloody strap comes off and I can't fix it, there goes my money down the drain because Chanel Australia just, they don't do refunds and I know that you're entitled to one under the consumer law, but it is a fight. And it's like, I'm just so over the fighting with luxury brands, in particular one. I'm just so over it that I was like, I just don't, you know, I was thinking, gosh, I don't want to have to do that with Chanel. I didn't want to let the possibility of something happen and that chance of, you know, f that happening in the future. I just didn't want to let that spoil what I really wanted, had originally wanted. And I really wanted to get this, this heart bag. And I always said that I would only get it at the retail price. And I was lucky enough to buy it at the retail price. However, I do feel like I paid a premium because I had to buy something else. <laughs> I think that this really opens up like a can of worms because I feel like there's definitely going to be a lot of people that are going to go, no way, you shouldn't be keeping that, you know. And I think that that's a very valid point because it shouldn't be happening on a bag that costs $8,000. It shouldn't be happening on any luxury bag, you know, because what makes them any different than me just going and getting a heart-shaped bag from like strand bags? Maybe it won't have the CC lock and maybe it won't have the flap, but like, What's the difference then, you know, if the quality is not going to be amazing for their price point, and I know you're paying for the brand, but there has to be some level of quality expectation, not just for paying with the brand. Yes, the brand is the luxury component, but we also expect that that should marry up with quality. Obviously, this is not Hermes quality. Chanel is not handmade by artisans who are very skilled and trained. It is much more of an assembly line thing where they have someone doing some part and another one doing another part and it all just kind of gets put together and then, you know, set off to be put on the shelves. And Chanel just has crazy demand. So if you imagine the fact that they're doing an assembly line, you can imagine that they're just producing so much stock and um, there's probably just not enough attention to detail as to whether things are going to hold up and stand the test of time. But people still buy their products. I still buy their products. They're still making items that I really quite like. I think this, this is a very beautiful bag. Look at it. It's such a unique heart shape. They haven't done something like this in so, so, so long. The other heart bag that they did, um, it sells for like 30 odd thousand dollars in the resale market. And I'm just saying that as like a, a comparison to the demand and the rarity of when they do a heart bag, like it's not common. And I think that that also makes it a special bag. I know that the argument is that like, if you're considering the resale price and are you really buying a bag that you wanted? Um, and I think that yes, you can actually consider the resale price and be buying a bag that you want because sometimes we have to bench, sometimes we have to consider benchmarking the resale price into our decision making because money doesn't like grow on trees. And sometimes we wanna make sure that if something doesn't work out for us, I've definitely been in that situation where I've bought bags that I really wanted, just like this. Um, and I didn't consider the resale value and the bag didn't work out for me. I lost thousands of dollars. And I had done a video on that when I did my worst luxury purchases ever. Even though things have definitely changed since then, because that was done before the pandemic. And a lot of those bags that I ended up rehoming that if I had kept them, um, even just another year or so or two years, yeah, probably wouldn't have even lost money because the pandemic definitely changed things. But I also think that it gives people that backup, that peace of mind that 
if the item doesn't work out because you just don't know until you actually own it and use it as to whether or not something's really going to work for you. Having that extra peace of mind that it is going to hold its value does help you. I know personally it does for me. It does help me to make the decision on the purchase. But it is a very annoying process to like be selling bags. I find it quite annoying. I wish that I'd just get everything right. You know, that would just make things a lot easier because I think there's a lot of hassle involved when it comes to selling bags. So that being said, that did attribute to my towards my decision making is that I did have that as a fallback that if I didn't like the bag and it didn't work out for me that it should in theory given the hype for this kind of style that it should hold value but that could all come crashing down if more and more people have these straps break and then they become not repairable or even just the whole thing of the quality that could make it come crashing down and it could just be a pretty much a bag that's not really valuable at all but I'm willing to take that risk and that's the reason why I decided to to keep it was because I couldn't just I couldn't just give it a, I had to just give it a go I had to just give it a go and see how I was with like see how the bag worked for me see if I just you know I already knew that I I, I really like it love it whatever I already knew that <laughs> I just had that slight paranoia with what I seen happen with um Saki so but then I couldn't bring myself to let it go because I just know that I would have, I potentially would have regret for not having this in my collection. Um, I just, yeah, it's just so beautiful. Like it's a heart. It's so, so, so cute. And um, yeah, let me just have a, let me just show you the bag if you haven't seen it. Cause I've just done all this talking, holding the bag, assuming that you really know about it. Uh, but so maybe some people don't. So it does have CC's engraved, the CC engraved on here. You've got your flat pocket here. It did actually come with felt as well. Like there was felt just underneath here. See how there's the hole there. It was underneath the um, the flap and then it had felt inside in the pocket. Uh, flat, which is fully functioning. It does actually fit stuff in there. Basically, you're only going to fit cards in here. I can fit my iPhone mini, but it's going to stretch the pocket. So if I do do that, what's going to happen is this going to start pushing out. And even though this is already pushed out, like when you look at that, see how it's already pushed out anyway. I just don't know if I like the idea of potentially having like this bulge, like a permanent bulge happening here in this part. So I'm just using this for like cards, cards, maybe some tissues or whatever, just flat sort of stuff because I don't want to bulge that out. Um, it is a light gold hardware, which kind of makes me a little, I don't think it's light gold or is it gold? Hang on, let's take the sticker off because I am keeping it. So let's bloody take it off. Yeah, I'm certain that that's light gold. It's got to be, right? It doesn't look very yellow to me. But the zipper is very gold. Like, look at that. It is very, a very bloody gold zipper. So that's kind of a little bit confusing. The zipper doesn't exactly match to the hardware. Um, it's definitely a gold gold, but you know, that doesn't matter. I suppose it doesn't matter. I don't know if it usually ever does because usually I only had classic like, you know, mini flaps and stuff like that. So I can't really say whether or not that's a normal thing or whatever. Um, it does have a heart here too. And that's got the CC on it. The other side doesn't have anything on it. It's just normal. This zipper pull doesn't have anything. So there's no heart on this one. It's just a standard zipper pull tab. It does have the Mona Lisa back pocket, which again, you can just use for cards. I have kind of been chucking my phone in there. I just chuck my phone in upright and it kind of just sticks up at the top. But that's just so, it, like, that's just what I do if I can't be bothered to open up the handbag to put my phone in. And then um, you have the inside. So you've got the serial number here and then I've got some refresher wipes in there, another pocket here, another pocket here, and that's it. So it's a very simple, simple design, but it does actually fit. It fits more than I kind of thought that it would fit. Let me grab some items and I'll show you what fits in. Okay, so I'm going to we'll start off with this. We'll chuck this in. Um, too big for any of the pockets, but it does fit inside the bag. But I do have a, this is an iPhone mini. It's the iPhone mini 12, so... It's a small phone. I have my uh, Louis Vuitton key pouch and my keys. Usually I put my keys inside my Bastia, but today I was using my Mini Kelly and um, I couldn't fit my Bastia inside my Mini Kelly. Like it's just too chunky. So I took my keys out of the Bastia. So that's why my keys are still there, but I usually prefer to have them inside the Bastia. I don't like the idea of them scratching. But this is actually, um, the pockets are leather on this 
and the inside is camp like a, a fabric so it's fabric lined but the pockets are actually leather all right uh tissues as well this is not a full packet but then uh lip gloss my bastia so see how this goes this might be pushing it a little bit because my bastia is really fat at the moment all right i'm gonna see if this zips up because this is pretty full that is definitely full capacity with all those items inside the phone just just fits however i tend to take the phone out anyway and i just kind of it back in back at the back there so that's not really gonna stay in my bag but should i need to just have everything in the bag then it does it does fit everything um the best here is a little bit thick at the moment though um but um but yeah so it does actually fit quite a lot but if you have a plus size or a max size phone you're gonna find it a little bit tricky to fill up the bag as much as i just did um like there's no doubt about it it's gonna be a lot more tricky for you so i definitely recommend this bag if you can get a hold of it at the retail price <laughs> i think that you should go for it paying above retail look i'm not gonna lie i did consider doing that as well i at one point i was like oh, maybe i just pay like you know twelve hundred dollars over retail if that's only all i have to pay that's not too bad twelve hundred over retail probably still could would consider buying another one of these i actually did want black pink is not the, my first choice it wasn't i wanted black that was my first choice and then the purple and then between the pink or the blue so i wanted black then purple and then white was my last choice for the large because i did worry about it being a bigger bag in a pure white it did kind of worry me a little bit because uh, I, I was actually offered this one or the white. So I could choose between this or the white uh, from my sales associate, which was nice that I actually had to got my pick, but I didn't get my pick from all of them, unfortunately. Uh, but still better than having to have paid over the retail price. But I don't say that you shouldn't. Like, I'm not going to say, no, don't pay over the retail price. I think that it's a bit crappy that you're paying over the retail knowing that the strap can break. But I think that if you really, really like it um, and you really want it, then whatever makes you happy because I pay well and truly well over the retail price for my Hermes bags um and but they want they're what I want so I don't regret it I don't regret doing so so I'll never say that anyone shouldn't pay over a retail price for anything that they really want but just take that into consideration is that that strap it's a bit of a risk there but it does seem like it's repair like self-repairable if it does happen if there have been reports of more than multiple people that it has happened to. I actually know someone, a friend of a friend, that it happened to them with their white heart bag where the strap broke off in the same way that um, Saki's strap broke off. So that is a little bit concerning. They just get us every time. <laughs> Even if their quality definitely needs some improving. There is no doubt about it that they need some improving. There's other stuff I wanted to sort of say. Look, I think that... I think Chanel gets a lot of bad... I get, like it's kind of like with Louis Vuitton, like people rip on Louis Vuitton when they do increases and stuff like that. I feel like Chanel cops the same thing, like people rip on them with the increases. And you know, and I definitely have ripped on them with the increases because I do feel like they have definitely done way too many recently. Like it is just out of control. I, I really wish that they had not done at least, you know, from an, like from let's just say an, like a, a luxury mindset ethical point of view. Take that with a grain of salt because luxury is not like ethical, like it's not a necessity. Um, three price increases ago, I feel like I could tolerate. I was like, you know what? I know you got high demand, you need to up your prices. But then a another three more happened and I'm just like, dude, you, dude, your, your quality isn't even improving and you're upping your prices. I didn't like that. I think that that's, I, I'm not, I don't approve of that. However, However, I think that it's kind of unfair that we rip on Chanel so much because you've got to think of it this way. Chanel, I know that they started to play this sort of hard to get game a little bit like Hermes, you know, but to give them credit with Chanel, you can pretty much, if you've got a good sales associate, that's sometimes a problem as well. Uh, but pretty much with Chanel, if you do request to go on the wait list for a bag, and you are open to other colors, chances are that it'll come through and you don't have to buy like, like, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of other product to get the bag, to get that bag, you know? So that's to their credit. So I feel like it's kind of unfair in a way that we sort of rip on Chanel because, and like, you know, 
compare them to like Hermes and saying they're trying to be like Hermes and I know in a way they kind of a little bit are but they're not totally they're not because with Hermes it's a very different thing you could you know show your loyalty and buy all these products make a wish list for multiple colors of a particular bag you know a Birkin or a Kelly and it may never happen um and they just may never offer it to you if your sales associates leave they'll just forget about you. Like that happens a lot of the time, you know, I've experienced that, you know, and Hermes is also very particular about who they offer bags to. If for some reason they don't like you, they may very well not offer you a bag and it becomes quite personal. And again, like I said, I know, like I know all this, I've been there, I've done that, I experienced that. And that's why I also say that I have no expectations for my, uh, for me shopping at Hermes to get a bag because I just don't trust them. I think that they, Maybe this is just a thing in the US, maybe this is just a thing in Australia, because I know the US and Australia is quite similar. Even Canada is quite similar as well. Maybe it's just those particular Western countries that behave this way, but I feel like it is very difficult for a client of the brand to have trust that their wish can come true. It's very unfortunate, very, very unfortunate. Whereas when the shoe is on the other foot, when you compare Chanel in particular in Australia, and I even know that this is the same in the US as well, that yeah, you can actually, Put your name down for a bag and say you want a few different colors whatever like keep your options open right because it does it does make it easier for it to, for them to sort of come through um then you can actually get what you what you're asking for so now i know chanel is going down that road more of that road where it's like yeah you request something and you know you gotta you know you kind of gotta buy other items and that sort of thing i know that they're going down that road and i know that it's not what we're used to because that's not how they used to operate to be fair, that is not how they used to operate, and I wish that they didn't go down this road. I wish that they weren't trying to play the Hermes game. I really wish that they weren't, but the fact of the matter is, is that there is so much demand, and that is probably what the brand felt that they had to do in order to curb some of that demand, and also they probably are concerned that their bags aren't going to that they're going to die off. Maybe they're worried this is just a trend or something like that, so maybe they're trying to establish themselves as like, you know in the way that Hermes has established themselves. However, pricing is not not right. Like, there's a very big contrast in like the Chanel pricing to their quality, it is not there and it's very disappointing. And Chanel doesn't even have a bag spa for all their bags. They only spa their black classic bags, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Like, spa everything. If you're gonna make it, spa it all. And if you can't spa particular finishes, don't make them. Like, just don't make them, all right? Or spar everything else and just say that when you do these finishes, you're not going to do it. They're going down this road of trying to be like Hermes, which we already know that they can't because the craftsmanship's not the same. I think that we have to give them some, just give them a bit of slack. Cut them a little bit of slack because as someone who can say, who has definitely experienced the shoe on the other foot, I can at least say quite confidently that in my experiences with Chanel and from what I have heard is that they can come through with the handbags. They can come through. Got to have your options open. Like I said, I preferred black. Then they only offered me pink and white and I chose out of those ones. And I'm, I'm very happy that I did because, I mean, I got to pay the retail price, right? And I, even though, yes, I bought a pair of shoes that I'm not quite sure about, I probably could have just got earrings instead and it would have been much cheaper, less risky, but... Like I said, I wanted those shoes, but I don't think that that's all that bad. Like that's under $1,500 compared to like Hermes. They want you to show all this loyalty. And I'm just talking relative to like, you know, these particular countries I mentioned, they want you to show all this loyalty before they even offer you a handbag. And it's kind of like, you don't even know if you're going to get one. Um, I know that that's very different in the UK. Whenever people say, oh, I got my bag, no problem. I didn't really spend anything. And it's like, well, if you're in the US, Chances are you probably got a bigger bag um, for that to happen. But if you're in like the UK and Europe, yeah, totally. Like it's very different. I wish that like that in Australia and whatever, that we operated more like the UK and Europe, but we don't. And that's why I tend to, even though I don't like these increases from Chanel, I tend to be more inclined now, given the experiences I went through, to be more defensive of Chanel than what I would be of her <laughs> Like, it, or, I mean, like, I would kind of, I have no, like, real relationship with Louis Vuitton. I'm not really in, that into Louis Vuitton. I buy very few pieces from them. So I would probably be more inclined to defend them if I was into them because I feel like they operate very well as well. They have fantastic customer service. Um, but 
I am happy that I got it, even though at first I was like, mm, maybe I made the wrong decision. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to say as well, um, I will link down below some of these heart bags. Look, I have seen them on Vestia Collective and sometimes on eBay, sometimes mostly on Vestia Collective for an okay price, like over the retail, but not like three to 4,000 over the retail, like only like maximum of about two to two and a half thousand. I have actually seen these bags on Vestia Collective for an okay price, like not too bad in contrast to what I have also seen. So I will link some down below if you are thinking about this bag. The thing I also was worried about, you know, if I didn't get it, what if they never brought it back for a long time? Um, and then I missed out on a piece that I could potentially have as a forever bag. Maybe, I don't know if this is a forever bag. I cannot say that yet. Fear of missing out and the regret of not doing it, you know? And 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 that's also why I was like, no, I've got to have to keep it. The other thing is that I don't want to have color transfer. I'm too paranoid because I have had it many times with my Chanel bags and I'm getting fed up with it. So I decided this time that um, I have used before the Bags and More Protector Spray, which is really good, but I actually find that the Colonial Carbon Pro is much easier to apply, potentially mitigate the severity of it, maybe. The plan is not to get color transfer. The plan is definitely not to get color transfer on this bag. I'm going to wrap up this video because it is bedtime and my kids have come asking me to go to bed. So yeah, I'm going to leave links down below to some heart bags. All right, we're signing off. Um, please feel free to leave your thoughts down below on the heart bag. That's it. I'm going. They're bumping the camera. See you later, guys. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.